I come out to find this. Shoo shoo. Shua. Is this you? Did you do this? Was that you? Yeah? These are mini marshmallows that my daughter put in her shalak manos this year and she sent me one all the way from Lakewood. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I'm gonna save those for Pesach and make my Pesach shmura s'mores. Shmura s'mores, that's what they are. They're made on the blech. They're really good. Chocolate and marshmallows, it's yum. Onion, pepper, garlic, basil, oregano, parsley, diced onion, powdered onion, paprika, and so these are what I always need. I can't live without these. And a little baking powder. And I've never made anything with duck sauce, but I looked at the ingredients and I thought, you know, this is gonna save me a lot of time, so I got one of those. And this chocolate thing, I've never had that, but it was the only one left, and I got like FOMO when I saw it. I thought, there's only one left, I have to buy it. <laughs> it's chocolate, it's chocolate. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I don't you know, eat a lot, I'm just here, I'm just, you know, just one person. But anyway, the whole point of me showing you this is two things. One is that I'm not keeping a cupboard. I'm just keeping it out on the counter. It's just easier for me. So that's what I'm doing. I wiped up my counters, but I'm not storing in there. So I'm just keeping it on this one shelf right here. And this is where my supply is. And over here, I have all my dishes, all my Pesach dishes on this counter. And over here, we are cooking right now. We're starting to cook. So that's just getting started up here. I've got my dishes that have gone through the mikvah and are ready. And that's it. Oh, there's my cute little mitts. This little pot that kosher my sink. And I did put it back in the water all the way. I submerged the whole thing. <laughs> so now I can use it to drink out of because I wasn't sure about that. And, you know, I didn't have a chance to call the rabbi and ask. So I just took it to the mikvah when I took the other items, when I took the knives. So that's it. We're all kosher here. I also kosher. So that was done earlier as well. That's 4.51 a.m. And I need to start cooking. First thing, squash. Look at the size of this squash. That's a 9 by 13 pan. <laughs> so it's over, it's just about 13 inches long. Is that amazing? So this will make two big kugels. And that's just one kugel. Then I'm going to make potato kugel. Then I'm going to start working on the roasts. But i got to get these roasted first because this is going to take a while. It's all about the kugels. So I have four kugels going and there's brisket in the back. Those are raisins that have puffed up. It's been roasting for a very long time. Okay, I think it's definitely softer than it was.
kugels look really good and I am going to taste one of them just to make sure they're okay. It is a mitzvah to taste the Shabbos food and one of these will be for Shabbos. So I'm going to taste it. Super delicious. It has like this slight crunch on top and it's creamy in the middle. So good. I love making kugels. So we've got the butternut squash kugel and we have potato kugel. It is Erev Pesach and I am getting ready to do four things. I don't have a lot to do today because I need to rest for the Seder tonight. We have to be very alert. So it's about resting today and taking it easy. But I do have to make chicken soup, matzo balls. I need to toivel again. <laughs> again, just one more time. I need to make schnitzel and I need to grade the horseradish, which is a huge deal. The sages say that if we cry when we grate the horseradish, we won't cry the rest of the year. I will be definitely be crying my eyes out when I'm grating that horseradish. And you know, when I do grate the horseradish and I'm crying, I'm gonna be thinking about all the things in the world that we need to be crying about because there are plenty. First up, this chicken soup. Here's my beautiful Pesach chicken soup pan. And I'm gonna show you the secret to a clear broth. It's one little technique, and I learned it from the Ruby Cooking School. I didn't graduate, but I did a lot of their courses. I just never put the effort in to do the whole course. But there are some things that I did learn how to do, and it's really all about technique. The best cooking is about technique. It's not even about the ingredients, although ingredients are everything. So let me get this going. I'm gonna fill this up with just enough water to cover the bird and I'm gonna bring it to a boil, and all of that scum, you know, the chicken scum, it's gonna to float to the top. We're gonna to pour that water out and rinse the chicken, and then add the water. So it is the secret technique is letting the chicken scum float off after the first boil, then rinsing it and getting rid of that water and starting over, and then the water is perfectly clear, and it's beautiful, beautiful broth. I'm showing you some random things because I think this is the coolest thing. I didn't have a dish rack and I needed to go to the store yesterday and I didn't have the energy, I couldn't do it. So I ordered from Instacart, I ordered a dish rack and two water pitchers because I didn't have any and they delivered them. I ordered the dish drainer, but there was no rack that came with it. So I created this makeshift little tray. I got two nine by 13 foil pans and I cut them down the center and I fused them together with foil and I made this very cool tray and I made holes underneath so when the water comes out it'll just drain into the sink. So I'm really excited about my makeshift little draining rack and I elevated it with wads of foil so it's on the incline. <laughs> to show you that. I'm very proud of my invention. Just kidding. Not like I'm gonna try to patent this or anything. But one more thing, I wanna say that this Hamilton Beach, it was not very expensive food processor. It's amazing. It's really awesome. I love the way the unit comes together. It's, it's an easy snap-in type of food processor, but it was really great for the Kugels, and I'm going to be using it to shred the horseradish. You can see already there's a film that's starting and the water isn't even boiling yet. So it's really that first boil that just brings all the impurities to the surface. You know, I know there's something about Pesach in this. Let me think about it. I got it. Kal Yisrael was at the 49th level of impurity before Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. We had so much impurity, it was rising to the surface and practically boiling over. But we were saved and we were redeemed, Baruch Hashem, for that moment that we read about every day and that we celebrate 
every year. It's fantastic, amazing, such a bracha for Kal Yisrael. Passover it is. All the miracles occur on this night. This is a night of miracles as we recall what happened when Hashem took us out of that miserable place. That's right. The place of servitude. The place of absolute gullis, just like we are now. We're total slaves right now. People think they're free. We're not free. We're not free. None of us are free. And some of us are really locked down in different ways. So we should all taste true freedom this Pesach. Just got back from toiling. The chicken is boiling. I'm going to drain this and put fresh water in again. You can see there's still some scum on the side. I'm gonna wipe that out. I don't have a sink that is conducive to this huge, huge pot, but I do the best I can here. So that's what we're gonna do. Wipe this out and fill it up with fresh, clean water. You know what? I have to correct myself. This isn't how you do it. You have to rinse the bird until it's clear. Because I'm adding water and I'm noticing more stuff is coming out. So I'm going to rinse this until it's clear. Then I'm going to put in the fresh water and then we're gonna have the perfect clear broth. I have rinsed this chicken so many times I lost count but it is finally clean. Now I will fill it up with cool water and we will cook this bird until it's, you know, where we want it, which is perfection. I admit it's not a good idea to experiment on Arab Pesach, but I just have to do this. I am going to try and make delicious matzo balls from scratch with this shmura matzah. So I'm making it up as I go along. I know what the ingredients are in the best matzah meal, matzah ball mix in the market, which is this one right here. It's the best, you can count on it. It's totally reliable. So I reverse engineered the ingredient statement and I'm going to build this. <laughs> I'm gonna build this product right now. <laughs> We'll see how we do. And if per chance it doesn't turn out, I have what to rely on. I can make these really quick. But I'm hoping that this turns out. Okay, all the powders are in. We're gonna add the leavening. Well, I sort of added leavening already. So here are the dry ingredients. I'm gonna mix these first, and then I'm gonna mix the eggs and the oil together and add those in here. And this is a lot. This is a lot. You know what I'm tempted to do? You know what? <laughs> if this turns out, I might have to make my own matzo ball mix because I can improve upon what's there already by making it all natural and organic because <laughs> I know why they're so fluffy. I looked at the ingredient statement. I know why they work and why other people's matzo balls don't. I'm gonna add some oil to the eggs. Okay, this is where it's gonna be a little weird because I don't have the exact measurements, but I will wing it. I will wing it and this will work out. 
because I put the taste into the matzo ball. All the flavor is going to be in there. It's just a matter of getting them fluffy. So let's put this in here and see how it goes. And I can see I have way too much matzo in here. Okay. That means I'm going to add another egg. This is way too much. It was one cup, which is way too much. You probably need about two to four ounces. You know, the texture is pretty good. I think, and I know what this recipe is, so if it works, I have it in my head. To speed up cooking, you need to memorize recipes. You need to memorize flavor profiles and recipes so you can whip up food really quickly. That is the key to the kitchen. Okay. That looks good enough. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and let it sit. And I have my water boiling now and we will make the matzo balls. And if they don't turn out, if they're not fluffy like I like, then I will just whip up a batch of the manischewitz. I decided that I'm gonna add a little seltzer to this. It is too thick. I added too much shimura matzo. And there needs to be a certain texture, a viscosity <laughs> to things before they'll turn out. And I can see that this is just too thick. So I'm going to mix in this bubbly, sparkling water and get the texture right. Because it has to have a certain feel in your hand. And I could tell. <laughs> When I put it in the fridge, I, uh, no, that's a little too firm. That's just a little too firm for a matzo ball. And you could just smell the shimura matzo. You could smell that, kind of that burnt, slightly burnt, delicious shimura matzo aroma. You could smell it. It doesn't smell like regular matzo ball mix at all, which I like. Okay. That, to me, is the right texture. So let's let this sit in the fridge for about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna form them into balls and boil them up. Okay, here we are. The big event. It's a little moldy, it's okay. I ordered these from Etsy a while ago. It's huge. Oh my gosh, okay, that's a little too moldy. Of course, everything was packaged up because I wasn't ready for queso. First is peeling. The size of this. I have never had such a huge horseradish. And I can just imagine how much I'm gonna be crying. This is a tough root. You know, it's interesting really tough and just beat up and not so attractive but man is this powerful <laughs> is this powerful you know I can already smell it I haven't even started grating and my nose is being tickled at the moment don't really think I need this, but let's do it. Gosh, it's, so, it's so hard. It 
is so hard, right? Being in exile. got buy one get one half off without the store. I needed a knife and this is what they had so there you go. But for sure I think I broke the ceramic knife last year doing this. Okay let's see if this will fit. It fits. Okay here we go. I'm going to be shredding it. Oh my gosh. This is a lot of horseradish. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh. You know what? I'm ready to cry for the whole world and I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm not. My nose is very runny. And last year when I did this, I was just bawling like a baby, but I'm not right now. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay. Okay, let me put the lid on this. I didn't cry that much. Okay. Awesome. Okay, that's done. More is done. Okay, matzo balls are ready for success or failure. And these are huge. I know they're huge. Oh well. And I'm hoping these will be fluffy. If not, well, you know what we can do. We have a backup plan. The Manischewitz backup plan. <laughs> but I want this to work because I want to solve the problem of the rock hard matzo balls. This video has been brought to you by Tooth Soap. Feel a difference after the first brushing, guaranteed.